today, uh, Ponca relatives, we're going to be talking about the clans of the Ponca out of the walks on the ground, Thonde Aunt Molly. And then I'm going to talk about what I grew up hearing and uh, the differences of how it's become and what we are today in our clan system. Uh, we're going to have uh, Sister Connie. She's going to read out of that book. Uh, after every paragraph, we're going to stop and uh, recap on it, and I'm going to ask some questions, and then uh, we're going to uh, go on. Go ahead, sister. All right. Um, if you're following along, this is Walks on the Ground, Chapter 16, Clans of the Ponca. The elders' interpretation of the word clan is a group of people who are related through their fathers. Their mothers are of a different clan. The elders believed through the lineage, a clan has a common ancestry, being exo exogamous, exogamous. The Ponca are allowed to marry outside of their clan. Therefore, children of any clan cannot marry within their own clan. In tribal organization and political governance, the clans were connected according to the elders. There was a rush of searching for information on the clanship system of the Ponca people in the early 1970s when it was again apparent that the elders of the tribe would not be with us much longer. During the interviews, there was a general agreement about the origins of the Ponca clans and their position in the summer encampments. As mentioned elsewhere, the Ponca camped in four circles. The lower Brule, B-R-U-L-E, once was called the Ponca Eagle. Oh, listen, that's a listen, that's oh, a Lakota word. It's not Ponca. Did you hear me? Okay. That's a that's a yes. Lakota word Lakota, not Lakota. that means uh, people, four people. Okay. Uh, it says it means here. It, uh, it's trans translated as four camps, referring yeah, to the four, four circles, which is which is what you just said. Yeah. Other Sioux people referred to Ponca as Oyati Yamni or three villages, yes. probably in reference to the last three Ponca villages before removal to Indian territory. Initials K H N C J P A M C and A L said that the Ponca people had divisions within the tribe called Tawanda. Tawanda. Okay, or clans and that they camped according to their place in the circle or circles. The modern term means town or city. Although there was no apparent evidence that the clans are affiliated with the directions, the division of the clan encampment included with the eight, excuse me, I think I messed that up. Although there was no apparent evidence that the clans were affiliated with the directions, the division of the clan encampment coincided with the eight directions. The Ponca people had eight clans, which were patrilineal. KH initials supp supplied the names for the directions in the following diagram. Okay, it says beginning with east and moving counterclockwise, the English translation of the Ponca terms for the directions are as follows. East, eagle. Which means where the sun rises. Okay. That's northeast, which is that which is touchable. North would be Osniata. Where called Northwest. Itaheata. Which is at the top or ending. West. Mi Ereta. Where the sun goes down. Southwest. It's new, Gata. Meaning lost. South. Mashteata. Can you read that again? That was cutting up. Mashteata. Mashteata. Where the sun shines. Southeast. Hideata. Hideata. Connie, an eagle, and it has a little yes. Connie, you're like uh, blanking out on us again. Oh no, I'm sorry. But, okay. yeah, that's the end of that. Did you want me to read something again? 
right here, before we go on this next paragraph, you know what he said that he was talking about the direction, the eight directions that the Ponca have. Originally, we had eight clans, and, uh -huh. and when we came to Oklahoma, out of the what they call Nesta, Nesta, had reference to the Al clan. It was an Al clan, like an O W L Al clan, Fondaho. There was only two women left that they say, and they were both older women that were from the Al clan. We might have lost it, Robert. We might have to carry on. Can you hear me, Robert? Yeah, I can hear you, Eagle. Okay. Well, I'm going to start reading. She comes back on. I'll let her take it over. Yeah, no problem. Prehistory of the Ponca people. There were no songs made a prehistoric period of the Ponca. The only source of information comes from the elders who probably sat around the campfires relating stories about their travels and landmarks they had seen. Stories of great accomplishments of individuals in hunting and in meeting other people were included or incalculated in the minds of young men and women. Children's stories too of animals ran parallel with real life experiences of the people. The oldest story of the Ponca origins begins in a phrase, Pahongadichti, meaning in the very beginning, the elders agreed in that. In the very beginning, the Ponca were traveling and came to a place where the land narrowed. And there was water on both sides of the land they traveled on. The term Ugashon means travel, but can mean discovering to find. So that word Ugashon has a dual meaning. It means to travel or it can mean to discover and find something. This means taking from the enemy, if necessary, to acquire varied provisions for the tribe. This is the, the content for the legend of how the Ponca came into content of this continent. Connie, we started reading. Can you hear us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear you good okay. now. Your face is frozen, but I'm, I'll read and then I'll let you read. This is the context of the legend of how the Ponca came to this continent. The Ponca people have always traveled, and their knowledge of the directions and the positions of the stars became essential. It's been said that the establishment of names for the directions coincide with the stars. A short description of the stars and their importance to the Ponca people is given by Albert Makes Cry. The old time Ponkas paid a lot of attention to the stars and they had names for many of the constellations. The Ponca Huluga or camping circle was based upon the circles of stars in the sky. The Milky Way we call Wakan Ojongue, the holy path or holy road it can mean. Its movement was used for the reckoning time. The North Star is called Mikai Shkanji. And that just means star that doesn't move. And it was used by hunters and travelers to find their way. The old time Ponkas watched the moon too. In its last quarter, the moon was called Mi Te. Dead moon. We looked for signs of storm at that time. How would 1995 75? You want to try to read on? Are you still with us, Connie? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'll try. The Ponca clans, as explained by the elders, are fixed in the following positions in the a ceremonial camp circle. Originally, the Ponca circle was entered from the east and directions above the located by being counterclockwise. Bottom tower procedure left to center or clockwise. This change is this change probably due to influences from Southern Plains tribes. Fortunately, the position of the clan circle remained intact. The addition shows the camp represented by four circles. Come here. Come here. We can't hear you at all. It's like breaking up bad. Connie, can you hear me though? Dang it. I don't know what to do. 
Connie, can you hear me? Yes. I'll just read because he uh, Robert yeah. probably ain't hearing you. He doesn't have a book. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, Robert, Connie, we're gonna start I'm back sorry. over the punk. Yeah. No, it's okay, sis. The punk clans are explained by the elders are fixed in the following positions in the ceremonial camp circle. Originally, the punker circle was entered from the east. And like the directions mentioned above, the clan positions were located by proceeding counterclockwise. In modern times, however, the procedure is to the left of the center or clockwise. This change is probably due to the influences of southern plains tribes. Fortunately, the position of the clans in the circle remain intact. The illustration shows the camp represents by four, represented it by four circles. The Ponca have three or more legends concerning the origin of the clans. They have been agreed upon by the elders. The first was shared with me in 1980 by Albert Makescry, who was 86 years old at that time. My translation. And what he means by that is, when he says my translation, Grandpa Albert Makescry talked nothing but Ponca. The Poncas were on water, and as they came to the sandbar, they could see land. When they got on shore, there was a high cliff there. It stretched out as far as they could see on either side of them. They tried to climb the cliff, but could not get on top. They searched for a way up the cliff. Turn the page. But could not find a way. Finally, one day, a man came back to the camp and said, I have found a way, but it is a crevice in the rock cliff, and it is big enough for only one man and a small bundle to climb. Go through it, he further stated. Up there is land, and there are all kinds of game. Bison, antelope, deer, elk, moose, rabbits, squirrels, and birds of every kind. Also, there is a man there who has invited us up there to live. He said, there is a way that is right and good way to take or kill these animals, and that we must follow his way as a custom of their time. Men carried large bundles wrapped in twice as large as themselves. Some tried to fit into the crevice, but found that they could not. Then they laid their belongings on the ground and began to pack them into small bundles. Some were anxious to get up there and see, perhaps, see the animals they could kill for food, but they were admonished by the leaders and told to proceed slowly because they did not know the land. After they were settled in on the land and had camped, they began to explore, only to be told to stay near the camp. In those days, there was no order in the camp. The camp they camped where the grass grew in any fashion they wished. After some time at Palace, the man who was there called the leaders of the people and began to instruct them how to go about in taking the animals for food. Since this was the first time they could go hunting, they were told to follow the instructions given to them. The killing of animals would occur under the conditions that permitted leaving their, those animals about to give birth and those that were too young to take. Some animals should be killed at various times of the year. There were parts of the animals, too, that they were considered as forbidden to eat, such as heads, tails, skins, tongues, blood, and so forth. There were reasons for such things then. Today, we do not know why. They killed some animals because they were hungry and immediately ate them. The end result was that these people became sick and carried their malady throughout their lives. The disobedience to the man, there was the main reason. It happened in the following way. The man there had told them, wait for a particular time to kill these animals. And as they prepared to go for the hunt, the man divided up by the relationship. Their groups included grandfathers, if they were able, fathers, sons and nephews, etc. Some had close friends who joined. Although they were not aware of it, they were forming the beginning of the Ponca clans. So when that time came, the men went forward to hunt, but the majority of the men did not only kill the designated animals, but killed others as well. After they killed, they laid out the animals for the rest of the people so 
to see because they were proud of their accomplishments. They had killed practically every known animal there. They also built a huge fire, and some took the coals to make separate fires, but the man there was disappointed in them and told them to leave the animals where they lay. But the people were hungry and ate them. The man said, there said, since you violated the instructions I gave you, those of you who ate the parts of the meat are forbidden to eat will never eat it again. The generations of children to come will also be forgetting to eat these part, those parts. Some of you who took the skin of the animals will not be allowed to touch them again. The ones who first took the charcoals were forbidden to touch or cook upon the charcoal, nor could they use it for the paints. The clans were named by these acts. The man there told them that they must abide and live according to these rules. They called this man Wafe. Wafe means the creator of God in the Ponca language. He was also called Wakanda Nikawasa, depending upon the kind of ceremony or ritual the Ponca were performing. Remember that, Robert and Connie. Wafe truly means God or creator. The word Wakanda is a way that once served God, but now it is considered God. Nika Wasson, depending on the kind of smell, that, that means Nika means man, Wasson, like how they painted themselves. But anyway, but those are all associated with God or Creator. Okay, now, Robert, what did you take of that? This uh, large paragraph we just read, Connie and I. Yeah, I thought it was quite interesting, especially about how uh, just because they hunted all those animals, whatever ones they touched, they couldn't uh, touch again. And especially the uh, how it went from eight clans and all in the different directions, and it was down to three, and that's how the the Sioux called us the uh, what the three villages, I believe you guys said. Yeah, they called us four. And they called us four. They said, "Well, see, when you say Oyate, our equivalent is Nyashiga. Oyate means people or man. Nyashiga means people or man. But when they said Oyate Dupa, that means four nations or four camp circles." It has reference to that, but it literally doesn't mean that. And then when they said Oyate Yamani, that means the three three villages. But like I said, Yamani is our equivalent to Dabli of the Lakota and the Dakota and Lakota people. And so on there, it wasn't that we did it down to three clans. We were down to three villages. Then let me have a, pl uh, a pen. And so I'm going to let you carry on, Robert. Yeah, that's about all I had to say, really. What do you got, Connie? Um, I'm trying to get on my phone. Uh, I have a dog. I have a dog that's dying to get out. I have a dog that's dying to get out. Let me turn this volume off. I'm sorry, but yeah, I found it very interesting because I hadn't really heard the story of the creator before as far as um, in that detail. I'm sorry, you're seeing under my table there. <laughs> this is my dog that's biking the crap out of me right now. <laughs> uh, uh, he's, about, he's about to go crazy. He goes up and turned around. Oh, that's my table. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's dying. Um, where are you at, Buddha? <laughs> uh, once again, I hadn't heard that. Uh, the clan creator, honestly, um, I found it so interesting. It's a little hard to recollect what this going on over here. It's crazy, dog. I'm gonna go outside with him, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to.
Uh, I can't hear her no more, but okay. Now we're talking about the directions earlier. We're talking about the north is Os Osnata, and then Itata is the northeast, and me, Edomata, that's the east. Hideata, that's the southeast. Mosteata is the south. And then we got Isnugata, is which is the southwest. Miireta is the west. Itarajata is the northwest. And so same way our clans were Robert was Dijida. Moncon, Nika Pasna, Wajaje, you guys have to go help yourself. Nesta, oh, first let me just tell you what these mean anyway. Dijida was my mother's clan, and my mother came from what they call Dijida, Dijida, and that means the real ones are the pure Dijida, but the term Dijida was lost, but it originally has reference to a mountain lion or a cougar and now everybody says blood clan and it literally doesn't mean blood clan now there was a sub clan that was called dixi da wami and i don't know if it's going to talk about that as we read further on but i want you guys to know what we're talking about and nika pasna is our out clan but nika is a human pa is a head shna's ba nika pasna so it means that it's a skull, a bald skull, but we call it elk. And wajaje, that literal term is lost, but it has reference to an ancient snake skin. Nuche literally means ice in Ponca, but it has reference to our buffalo clan, and it's the second buffalo clan we have. It's not the first. He said the, he means leg. Sada means it's outstretched, like how you got it. You, like if someone's running, they're running like this as far as they can run, their legs going back and forth. He said that. And those are also called thunder people. Washabe means uh, it's like a silhouette. It's a silhouette of a buffalo in the horizon, like a shadow, a dark shadow. But it, it's our buffalo clan. It's our main buffalo clan. And then Neshta Nesta has reference to water, like it's watery. And but it also has reference to owl, owl people. So that we call that owl clan. And then you have Moncon, which is the medicine clan or medicine people. And so those are the ones that we got in those directions that were named and I just showed you in Ponca. And now we're gonna go on to this. Connie, can you you look like you're all right now. You wanna try to read or you good? Okay, now we're going to go on the oh, second I, lesson. Yeah, I, I'm on the same I, phone that I'd have to read off of, so I can't until I get back inside. But you, my but dog, let me. Good. Yeah, you I know, but now. I don't have, I don't have the reading material because it's on the same phone. <laughs> my dog <laughs> let me know in a not so pleasant way that he had to go outside. If you understand my meaning, Dubache. <laughs> Dubache. <Okay. laughs> Thank you, okay, now, but I'll, I'll read in a minute when I get back in. Okay. Uh, you want to read real quick, Emily? Or when you guys want to read? Because I got like a bad list. I don't like it. Okay, so anyway, this next one is the second legend. It's told by uh, Grandpa Kenneth Hedman. And that last one, Hedman, that, the real translation to Hedman is Nudon Hunger. Nudon Hunger. And it also talks about the liberation of the sacred pipe is predominant. The following was given by his own accord. The Ponkas were coming and walking and traveling on the land. There was water everywhere, but they were on dry ground. They could see land up ahead, maybe mountains and trees. They kept coming until they arrived at the mainland. The leader at that time was Mikaishka, White Star. He was a chief after they settled and camped and take notice of the land. They say that White Star used to go out toward the east and pray. 
In those days then, people depended upon each other, especially those who could pray. He helped one another like that. Sometimes others would go out and pray too. They did that in the early morning about sunup. One day the people saw a wall cloud and it came down to the ground. They heard a voice talking come from the cloud telling them about the land. He told them that this land, there was plenty of game and small, of all kind of animals, small animals. And he said there was plenty of good things in that land, good water, plants, berries, and all kinds of nuts to eat. He said that they had to take care of it in a good way. They say that he stretched out his hand through that cloud and he gave them the sacred pipe, the Nini Bawakube. He told them to take it and use it. The person wife accepted it. And since he was the leader, they say he was told how to use that pipe. There were all kinds of prayers for the different things, for finding food, getting rid of sickness, keeping peace among the people, finding answers to the different kinds of problems that the people might run into and other things. From that time on, he told White Star that this pipe would pass, would be passed on to teach generations in his family. He's supposed to teach the one who's going to take care of it, everything about how to use that pipe what it means and how to pray for the people probably the most important that was said by the almighty is saying that what the hand of death in the beginning the saying is this god can you need my case no i'm gonna eat i got stupid stuff that uh this means with this part you will make yourself the people the word thumb has many different meanings it can mean a city a clan too and these words it means and as long as we got the pipe and we are using it in the right way, we will always be a tribe of people and will be taken care of by Wakanda. There was warnings given to him. He said that if we didn't handle it right, we would be scattered everywhere and wouldn't be a tribe anymore. And that when that day came, we would not even know our own relatives. He said there would be no respect shown to one another if we fail to take care of the sacred pipe. So that's how the Ponca got the sacred pipe from him. The Ponca called him Wache, which means creator or maker. Today, they changed that name to mean those white people. In our meetings in Peyote, we call him Almighty, but sometimes we say creator. In those days, there was no such thing as a clan. But they were going to do that, i.e., the clan would be formed. After some time, after they first spoke to him, the punkers went against the rules and killed lots of animals. They say they were not supposed to kill certain kinds of animals. They weren't supposed to kill young buffaloes or other animals with their young. Certain times of the year are animals that shouldn't be killed, but they did that. My family members, the creator, divided the tribe up. There were eight groups that went hunting and represented the family, so they became known by clan, were forbidden to eat certain animals and parts of the animals. Some clans could not eat, touch the skin of deer, elk, or antelope, or moose. Some clans could not touch the tail of a buffalo or eat the tongue. That's, that's, that's your clan. They never said that you couldn't eat buffalo meat. That's why I understand some of these members, because I told people that before, you know, more, you know, ogre. She's Buffalo Clan too. And I told her all these years, she said, None of my family's yeah. going to eat it. Yeah, but they can, and they can't touch the head, the skull. They didn't say it here, but that's what I was told. You couldn't touch the skull. But you can still eat the meat, just not the tongue or the tail. Okay, and the tongue, these are the rules for each clan of the Ponca tribe. To this day, if clan members eat these forbidden foods, they become sick or break out in a rash. Or poop on themselves, HR. Okay, when we were children, an elder would relate some of the historic elements to the tribe. The third legend was told following an inquiry about the Ponca origins made by one of the missionaries who came to the Ponca people in the 1940s. Helen Washington, Little Dead, a staunch Christian woman who told the following story. The old people tell us that the Ponca people were traveling between two bodies of water. They saw a big land in the distance and wanted to go get there. 
they said they lived along that way by hunting and fishing. They finally came to that big land. There they camped and hunted for game. They said that the land had lots of good things to eat, plants, berries, different kinds of nuts and roots. They said every morning they managed to go out to the east of the camp and talk to Wakanda. That's the way we say God, the creator. The real punker name for God is Walker, the one who made us. One day, as he was talking to God, the clouds came close to the ground. From that cloud or a mist, he heard God say to him, This land is yours to live in. You must respect it and take care of it. It will take care of you. Don't kill animals when you don't need the food. They say God gave him all the instructions on how to live there. With that, he gave the Ponca the sacred pot to worship with and pray to him. We don't know anything about those words given to that man, but he used to take the pipe out once a year and talk to God. They say he had prayers for everything that the Ponca people needed. When God gave that pot to him, he said, God, with his people, with this part, you will make yourself a tribe. I guess you could say a city or community, a town of special people. So to this day, we still have that part. And they take it out once a year and pray to God for our needs. What do you guys think about that, Robert? I do. So do we know what happened to that pipe? Do we still actually have the sacred pipe? Hang on. I'm going to take it off for